So if you watched my previous video in this series, I showed you how to set up an Android application using our Xamarin tools in Visual Studio. So now that you have a little bit of that foundation underneath you, let's check out how to actually make something worthwhile. Uh, so we'll start with an Android application, right? Blank app. Go ahead and give it a name. And get that set up in Visual Studio. And once you have your application set up, come over to your Solution Explorer, dig into the Resources folder under Layout. Remember, that's where we find our main. And the main is going to be our visual uh, GUI layout that we're going to be able to work with those items in the toolbox. So go ahead and get that open because it does sometimes take a minute. And while that's loading, let's just talk about what kind of app we want to make. So we want to be able to gather some input from the user using some of the controls that we'll find in the toolbox. We're going to look at how to manage that information once we've collected it. And then we also want to look at a little bit of navigation. So how do we open another window so we don't have to do everything just here in the main screen? So mine's open. I go ahead and usually just change this to Nexus 5 because that's what I developed with. Um, you can see my Nexus 5 is already connected to my, my computer for testing. Uh, I don't like to use the emulator unless I have to. And then um, which version of Android am I targeting? Which theme would I like? We'll just leave it like this. Let's go ahead and um, get rid of this Hello World Click Me button. So I'll just select it and delete it. You'll want to come over to your Solution Explorer and come down into the main activity.cs. There's already some code in this file. Uh, if you remember from our last lesson uh, that built on that button, so we'll just get rid of these lines here that have to do with that button. And then we'll also get rid of this integer that's counting so that we don't have any extra variables in this file. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's open our toolbox. So we're going to gather two pieces of information from the user. We want their name, just a first name, so that we can get some text information, and we want their date of birth. So I'm going to start by coming into my form fields. These are where my text fields are. I'm going to use a medium text. And then over in the properties, let's go ahead and get that window open. I replace the text with what I want it to say. So I'm going to say, enter your name. Right? And then in my text fields down here, I just want a plain text field. And I'm going to change the ID on this to name box so I can reference that in my code. I'm going to get another medium text so I can ask, uh, let's see, um, select your birth date. And then built into our controls down here under the time and date are a couple of different uh, like clocks and calendars and things like that. I like date picker. It just displays like a nice calendar. If we just plop it onto the screen, then it's going to fill this whole section here, which is fine for the purposes of our app. Right? So it's just going to fill this whole section. And I'm not going to name it. I'm going to change the name from date picker 1 to birth date uh, cal. There we go. And then we want to uh, do something with this information. And so I want a button or something that you know tells the user, hey, uh, I'm done. You can click me and I will process this information. So we're going to get a button and I'll just put it down here at the bottom. And then this is going to be our submit button. And I'm just going to put click me. You can put whatever you want right there. <laughs> All right, so here's our UI. And if we go ahead and test, then we could check out what this looks like. So you feel free at this point to run if you just want to see what's going on. Now, when I ran my application, I actually decided I didn't like the uh, date picker that I had chosen. So I swapped this out for a calendar view. So I just came onto my UI removed my date picker and put in a calendar view. 
So what we want to do next is set up a second screen so when the user clicks on that button it will open up that second screen and we can display the information that the user has given us. So we're going to look at how do we create that second screen and then how do we pass that data over. So ultimately Android calls these activities. An activity is just a single focus thing that the user can do. And an activity class is ultimately that window that we want to place in our UI. So let's look at how to create a ne another activity in our application because really, um, you know, this is called main activity. This is an activity and we're going to create a second one. And so we'll come over to our Solution Explorer and we're going to right click on the project and we're going to go to Add and we're going to go to New Item and when this window comes up you'll get all of the different templates and built-in items and everything that you can use so you can see activity here in the list and I'm gonna call this user display so user display dot CS uh, and we usually put activity in the name so that we know what it is so go ahead and click OK and it's gonna open that up for us here is our user display activity dot CS so here is where we would modify the code for um, what we want to have this portion of the application do. So there's two ways that you can do this when you create a new activity with our Xamarin tools. So you can either programmatically populate that screen by putting code here in the onCreate, which is kind of like a constructor for the view, or I'm sorry, for the activity. Uh, but you can also create a new layout file, so a new AXML file to go along with it. So we come over to our Solution Explorer. We're going to right click on Layout. We're going to add a new item and we're going to choose an Android layout. And I'm going to name this User Display and click Add. And that will generate our new UI layout. Now we have to tie the two together. So we see now that we have two AXML files in our layout. We have two CS files down here in our project. We need to tell user display activity that it's running this AXML file. And we do this with just one line of code. So in the on create of our user display activity, we would set content view to resource layout user display and so that tells our application that these two items are tied together and that they are ultimately you know that this is the code behind for that UI so I'm going to come over here to my user display and I'm just going to set up two of my little text labels well, I guess four, right? Because I want two for text. So I'm going to put name, and then I'm going to put another one, and then this is where we will display the user's name. And I don't want any text in there, so I'll just take the text out. And then this one's going to say birth date, and then another text for displaying the birth date. Awesome. I like calling these labels. That's a throwback to C Sharp development if there ever was one. Okay, so we have the UI set up. Now what we want to do is let the user do their stuff over here, click the button, and then our UI over here will open and populate the name and birth date that they gave us over here on the main activity. Okay, so generally the easiest way to pass information between two activities is by using a bridge class. And so I just came into my project and right clicked, did add a class, and you can see here I called it user data. And here's what this class looks like. And if you've done my iOS lesson uh, with Xamarin Tools, then you'll notice this is the exact same class. Um, so it's just a static class that holds our name and birth date properties. 
And so what we're going to want to do is come over to our main activity and set up our click event for our button. So we have our find view by ID, our button name is submit button, and I just put that into a little button variable named button. And then we set up a click event, right? Or we also call this a delegate. And so everything we want to have happen when that button clicks needs to go inside of these curly braces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that edit text for my name. Right? We do the same uh, find view by ID. It's an edit text. And we're looking for resource ID name box. I can then just call directly to user data name and put that name property in there using the dot text. There we go. Like we're used to doing with text fields. Now remember, I'm using a calendar view. So we'll do the same thing. And it's named birthday cal. Oops. Now, getting this date out of here is a little, little trickier. So we can't just call um, like a year, month, date, right? Because the, <laughs> I don't know why calendars have to be so hard to use. Actually, let me just show you what this looks like. So we'll uh, pull our user data. Now, our birth date is a date time. And the really only uh, property we get of our calendar view is this long, which gets the selected date in milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. So here's what we typically have to do, and I just went ahead and wrote this out for the interests of time. We have to set up uh, an event method, which is part of our calendar control, calendar on date change, in which this incoming args can give us year, month, and day. So then we can create a new date time, and then I can put that in the birth date property for the user. And so up here, all we're doing is registering that event method. And so that's the really the only way that you can get the correct uh, date time information out of the calendar view, because otherwise it's just kind of a mess trying to do the math for those milliseconds. So here in our main activity, we should have passed all this information over to user data. So all we need to do is come over to our user display activity and grab that information from user data and put it in our boxes. We use the exact same uh, kind of setup, and I just like to copy this statement uh, since we use it over and over. So we have two different boxes here. We have uh, name label and birth date label. I always forget what I name things. So we'll have, let's see, and these are, you got to know what type they are too. Uh, these are text views. Excellent. So we can do a text view. Just copy this. And so once we have these, then we can just equal the text property to our user data property. And on this birth date, you're going to get your uh, the same .NET two string uh, dates that you're used to seeing. I like two short date string as my option for display. So at this point you can go ahead and run and check out make sure that this uh, works the way it should. Or actually not because I skipped a step. Uh, we have not wired up our main activity to call our user display activity. Uh, so we don't want to forget to do that or when you click that button nothing is going to happen. Alright so in here This is where we're going to put this. So remember, we're still in our button click uh, event delegate. We've done all of the passing and collecting of information. So we talked about activities. Let's talk about intents. 
an intent is a facility for performing something that happens at runtime between uh, two items in our code. And most significantly, it's typically uh, designed to launch activities, right? So thought of as the glue between activities. So let's show how to set up an intent. Okay, so I usually just name it intent, if I can spell. It's a new intent. Oops. And we're going to pass it this instance of the view. I'm sorry, the activity. And then we want our user display activity is what we're opening. So then in our intent, you can um, determine if you want to try to do things, you can pass it strings, you can have it listen for things, you can do all kinds of stuff. But really we just want to run start activity and pass it our intent. All right, easy peasy. Two lines to wire everything up. Okay, so now that you've got it all wired up, go ahead and run and I'll show you what this looks like on mine. Okay, so you should be able to see my phone here in the screen. I have the app running, so I can click on the name box and I can type my name. This is hard to do one handed. And I can select a date. I'm just going to grab Friday the 4th or Saturday the 4th. And I hit click me. And there's my name. And there's my birth date from being passed over uh, from that class. So I hope this helps you understand how to use some basic controls, gather user input. And we talked a little bit about intents and activities, so you can start making applications that have multiple screens and kind of doing some navigation between them.